Welcome back. I hope you learned a lot with my last video about, you know, the differences of what men are going through versus what women are going through, because I think we have this idea on either side of the gender that one has it easier than the other. And I don't think it has to do with genders. I think it just has to do with humans. I think some humans are looking for true love. I think some humans are looking for superficial love. I think they're not even realizing it. I think some humans are destructive and don't realize it. I think some humans are destructive and realize it. Like there is quite a spectrum of humanity out there. And we can't be so quick to just point the finger and say that it's just because men suck or women are crazy. Like those platitudes get us nowhere. So I think in communication, in coaching, in therapy, in life, let's get more specific. What is really upsetting you? Is it some women are treating you like that? Are you going after the wrong women? Is it some guys are treating you like that? Are you going after the same guy? Is there a pattern in your life that you're repeating where you're consistently going after some of these people? And that's maybe where some of the reflection needs to be instead of saying, let's speak in absolutes. All guys are like this or all women are like that. Whenever I hear people speaking in absolutes, then I know that they're coming from a place of hurt or something that they haven't processed fully because they're extrapolating it to be their entire reality. And you hear me say that phrase a lot where we cannot speak in absolutes and extrapolate that to be our entire reality because that's when we miss things. That's when we get consumed by that reality and that will become our reality and we will stay in that reality until we start to look for something different. I'm a firm believer that we see whatever we put our flashlight on. So if you are only seeing asshole guys, then that's all you're gonna see for a while, honey. Or if you're only seeing crazy women, that's all you're gonna see. So it's our responsibility to take a step back and say, there has to be something else besides what I'm seeing because there are plenty examples of other women that are not crazy. There are plenty examples of men that are married and love their wives. There are plenty of examples of everything in between, but you need to make that choice to start to look for it. So why don't we look at how women are valued and how men are valued. So men seem to be valued and judged for their financial and social status. There are a lot of women out there, not all women, okay, that are, are chasing a certain lifestyle, that they have seen what they see on the Kardashians or Instagram or TV, and they say, I want that, and I know this man can give me that. So there's a reputation for certain women chasing ATM you know, receipts and seeing how much you have in the bank or like going on a first date and being like, so what do you do? What are you worth? Where do you live? What do you drive? and men feeling like they're being used for money. Now, some guys don't care about this because it can be a get out of jail free card to treat somebody poorly because they can do whatever they want, they can cheat, they can do all this because they're giving this woman a certain lifestyle. And so other men will see this and be like, wow, I can't believe women are like that. That's so disgusting. And they're with this guy that doesn't even treat them well. And it's like, okay, but that's the decision that they've both made. So we can't look at that and say that all women are like that because not all women are like that. But it is it is pretty common for women to want a man of means. It is changing in the modern day because a lot of women are making their own money. We don't have, we still have a pay disruption, but it's not as great, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's still, you know, women are becoming more independent and not needing the man to kind of like take care of them the way it used to. But there is something to be said that men are more valued for those things versus a woman because there are lots of women that are waitresses that can get a great job that never went to school versus a guy, if he doesn't have a job and he didn't go to school and he's waiting tables, girls are gonna wanna date him. They're like, oh, please, he just waits tables. They're like, oh, he works at 7-Eleven. I don't care what he's like. It, you know, he's an Uber driver, oh, whatever. Like, and there's so much judgment about what the guy does. And like, maybe, maybe he's making great money there. Maybe he's saved a bunch. Maybe he's living a great lifestyle. Maybe. Maybe you don't know what the story is. Maybe you treat you amazing and money would have nothing to do with it. But, oh, some people can't look past that. And this is the common struggle for men is that's what they're valued on. And it can be very difficult and very disappointing for men if they don't feel that they have enough to compete with financially, you know, 
you know, if they are working more of a modest job and they don't have a lot of money to compete, I've heard men say that to me, They're like, well, I don't feel like I can get, you know, the kind of girls that I'm looking for because I don't have the money to follow that. And that's really sad, but that is a struggle that men deal with. Now, on the other side of the coin, women are predominantly judged for their looks. And that just seems to be the way it is. And yes, men are very visual creatures um, and it's hard to not be like that, but a man can be in love with a woman and find someone incredibly sexy that isn't perfect, but it seems to be that the most competitive issue for women is being able to be pretty and being, you know, well-dressed and like put together. And men say that to me all the time, like, oh, I really want someone who takes care of themselves, AKA is not overweight, is pretty, that does her hair, that does her nails, that does all of that stuff. So it's, it's very competitive for women. And what if you're not the prettiest girl in the group? What if you're struggling with your weight? What if you're struggling with acne? What if you're struggling with, with all of these normal human conditions that we as women have to deal with? It's like, Jesus Christ, like you can't have cellulite because then that's gonna be on the cover of People Magazine and like, oh God, but there's the thing. Normal women have all these things. They have, you know, cellulite and stretch marks and, you know, pout poochy bellies and like wrinkles and, and all of this stuff. But it's like women aren't allowed to have those things because that's not desired. So they have to hide them and do laser treatments and go get Botox and, you know, go on diets. But then the guy's like, oh, but I don't want to be with a girl that, you know, doesn't eat. It's like, but you want her to look good and be in a size two. So which one is it? So women are consistently bombarded with all of these things of like, you know, how pretty you need to be and how thin you need to be and how great you need to look in order to get the guy. And so how horrible is it for somebody that's struggling with something like that and then thinking that there's no place for them in the world and that they're never going to meet somebody because they're not attractive enough because they're not gonna be swiped as much on these apps because apps do reduce things down to a visual level in a lot of ways. And it breaks down the psyche of both men and both women. And I find it heartbreaking, but it's it's weird because I've never, like you never see average looking women with really hot guys, but you do see very average looking men with very hot women because I think women can be more attracted to personalities a lot more than men can be. So, you know, there is a divide, you know, for men, it's like, you might, if you don't have as much money, like they have a great personality, sometimes that can work. And but with women, it's like, you know, oh, you're just not that attractive. So I can't, you have a great personality, but I'll never be attracted to you like that. And I'll never move past that. And that's something that women hear all the time. So there's definitely a big struggle there for both people, both genders for different reasons. Okay, so let's chat about dating in general and which is harder for men or women. I don't even wanna say harder. I think it's, what are the challenges? Let's say that. What are the challenges that men face versus what women face? So let's dive into men. So in general, and yes, things are changing in modern times, men have to do pretty much everything in early courtship. You know, they're the ones that ask out women first. They're the ones that plan the date. They're the ones that make the follow-up calls. They're the ones that plan and pay usually for a little bit. Even modern day society women will still say, oh, I like a guy to pay for the first date. So it's um, it's a financial situation that men have to deal with and they 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 could go on dates and have nothing in common with somebody and have a terrible time and then still be you know pressured into paying for the first date because that's what men do so there is a financial hit that men have to deal with um but then the other thing is they have to make all the risks so i think the number one thing that men tell me especially in modern day dating because of you know we do we did have the me too movement and you know women stepping forward for you know being accosted and sexually harassed and attacked and all of these things and that is an important narrative but think about it from a guy's perspective where a respectful man is now freaking terrified to make a move because they don't know if the woman's going to say that they're assaulting them and again don't take this the wrong way this is not try to exaggerate or disenfranchise any female's experience. I am a woman. I have dealt with my fair share of sexual assaults. But I'm just saying, like, from a man's perspective, like, I, there was a guy who held the door the other day for a woman. She's like, I can do it. And she, like, grabs the door from him. And he's like, whoa. You know, like, I'm just trying to be chivalrous. So, like, men don't know what each woman wants. And that's the difficult thing where, you know, some women say, oh, I can't believe he texted me. He should have called, so I'm not even going out with him. And the guy's like, I, I didn't know. I, I like, I just text people because the last girl I was with, 
thought that that was fine. It didn't want me to call her. So a lot of men are just doing what worked in their last experience. But every woman is different and we don't come with an instruction manual and we're not always that upfront with men about how to treat us. But then we're really quick to say when we're upset when they didn't do it right. So it's almost like this silent series of tests that men are going through where they don't even know if they failed or not. They just get no response or, you know, like a disinterested date. Um, so it's difficult. So they're, they're in the dark guessing because they just met you and they don't know how you want to be treated and they don't know what you want. And they don't know if you want to be texted or called, or if you want to go for sushi, or if you want to go vegetarian, or, you know, if you want to dress up or dress down or drinks or dinner, it's like you, they don't know. And they're making all these guesses, doing their best to try to put their best foot forward while continually being judged and shut down for not doing it right. And that can be a very difficult experience for a guy and really start to break down their confidence because, you know, they thought in their mind they were doing the right thing and then it didn't work out. And then they have to deal with more of the rejection side of things of like making the move and the girl saying no or asking for the date and the girl saying no or asking for a number and the girl saying no. Or, and then they have to keep pushing through that rejection to know if that's just the woman wanting to be chased and like putting him through the ringer. It's like, how do you really know anymore? You don't. That's why I think the best policy is clear communication on both sides. If we could just make this a 2021 rule that we just say what we want and say what we need up front. And then if somebody meets those needs, then we know that they're a good person as, as long as they're reasonable. Instead of this like guessing game or like, we're well, if he didn't do this, then he's clearly not a, guy, a good guy. You don't know that. You don't know that. Just because someone texted you instead of called doesn't mean he's a, a jerk. Just because someone called instead of texted doesn't mean he's invasive. Just because someone tried to kiss you on a first date doesn't mean he's just looking for sex, you know? Or just because, you know, he asked you up to his place. If you say no, it doesn't mean that he's now not a good person. It doesn't mean that you can't move forward and see if there's something more to it. It's like these assumptions can be very damaging and create stereotypes and create stigmas that might not be serving our best selves. And yeah, there are guys out there that you need to be you know, scared of that are dangerous and that are going after the wrong things. But we can't lump them all together. You know, we got to give guys some credit for putting themselves out there and making the moves and planning the dates and paying for them and doing all that effort. And then on the other side of the coin, women say to me, yeah, but we have to look good and we have to get our hair done and we have to buy the dresses and, you know, you know, work out. So we look good on the dates and like, you know, and, and this is a common thing, you know, before COVID women would have to plan their entire day around that date because what they wore to work is going to be very different than what they were on the date because it's not going to have the right look and guys won't be as attractive because they'd be too serious. So women have to like, you know, take a cab that morning instead of the train and like bring a pair of shoes with them and like do their makeup and change, you know, everything about it so they can be date ready. And a man just kind of like looks the same and just shows up to the date. So I do see that women obviously put a lot more effort into their looks versus men, but you got to think about it too. Like men, women do get hit on a lot. And obviously the more high value, the prettier, you know, all of that, the more relentless it can be. And it can get really exhausting after a while. And a lot of those experiences can be difficult because a woman, men have to learn how to build rapport. Whereas women are trained and have to learn how to break rapport because a lot of women are going to get a lot of guys and they might not be interested. And to the hard part for a woman, and I don't know if all men realize this, is when you get to the point of telling a guy you're not interested, that can go a lot of different ways. It could be you know, okay. And he could take it fine and say, Hey, all the best to you. Or you can get really nasty because there's definitely been times where you tell a guy like, Oh, I'm not interested. And he's like, Oh, you're the best. You're beautiful. I want to be with you. Da, 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 da. And then you're like, Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm not interested. He's like, yeah, well, you're a stupid slut. And like, da, 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 da. and it's like, it's immediate reaction where they're like so angry. And sometimes it does get violent. Like there have been women that have, you know, been out with a guy and decided they don't want to be with them or the guy makes a move and, you know, and then they say no. And then it turns violent. It turns into date rape. Like, you know, you've heard these stories before. So it's like women can be like terrified when they're going on the date. And women tell me this, like, 
I don't want to see him again, but I just, I, I, I don't want to say anything. And I'm just, I'm nervous. And, and maybe they don't have a reason to be nervous because maybe this is just a good guy, but they're bringing in from their past. But I just want the psychology to be understood why sometimes women will ghost too. Like they'll ghost just because they're afraid to say anything because they don't want to deal with the nasty remarks afterwards or even, you know, just in person, like just casually you're at a coffee shop and you're like, oh, no, thanks. Like, yeah, well, whatever. You're not that hot anyways. And it's just this like clap back. It's so fast. It's so nasty. It's so unnecessary. So those are some of the differences that men and women have to deal with when it comes to dating. Okay, let's talk about one more subject that I think needs to be dived into when it comes to the differences between men and women out there in the world of dating and relationships is sex and how um, society's perception of sexual experiences for each gender. So let's look at men first. So for men, it's interesting because as, you know, younger guys, it's like, oh, you know, did you, did you kiss her? It's always like, where did you get? How far did you get? And that seems to be the golden badge of acceptance between other men. So, you know, you're in the schoolyard and you're like, oh, I went out with Sally. And it's like, oh yeah, did you, did you kiss her? Did you feel her up? Did you do that? And a lot of guys will feel forced to lie or exaggerate what happened so that they feel like they were cool or that they're fitting in or that, you know, that they're a man, right? All of that, that narrative that can be really toxic and destructive. Um, because for men, it's like the more experience that they have, the more ability that they have to have good sex is like, then that makes them more masculine and that makes them more desirable. But the problem is, what happens if a man doesn't have that much experience and then all of a sudden the woman gets with them like, oh, wow, you don't know what you're doing. Like, oh, I don't want to be with you. Or women will say that like, oh, well, I wanted to sleep with him to see, you know, if he was good and bad or not. So, you know, that's it. It's like versus, you know, you're with somebody that's inexperienced and then you learn together. Or you, ex you treat, you treat, you know, tell somebody how you want to be treated in that way instead of these expectations that men have where it's like a man has to be good at all these things. And if he's not, then you're just not going to be with him anymore. And it's, it's difficult because how is an inexperienced guy supposed to get experience if a woman, as soon as they find out he doesn't have experience, doesn't want to be with him. Or as soon as he hooks up with him and realizes that he's inexperienced and doesn't know what he's doing is like not willing to have a conversation about it. It's more of like, you need to have all this experience, but you shouldn't be a slut and you shouldn't be dating around just for sex. So it's like this Men's heads are spinning because like being told that they shouldn't, you know, only be looking for sex, but then they're supposed to be magically good at sex without having experience at sex, but then they're not supposed to be having sex with people that want to have a relationship with them if they're not good at it already. So it's like, what the hell? How are they supposed to get ahead like this? And when men are being treated like that, that, you know, they're only valued at how experienced they are and how good they are at something, then it's like, but then you're shaming them for sleeping around too. Seems like a double standard. And then women, on the other hand, <sighs> it's very hard for us because newsflash, women are sexual beings too, and they like sex and they want to have sex too. So when a woman is judged by her peers for having too much sex, well, then she's a slut. So it's like women are being viewed as, you know, we need to restrain from sex. And that's what makes me a woman of value. So it's like a guy would say, oh, how many people have you slept with? And you say a certain number. And no matter what number you say, it's always too much. It's like, so that's why you're just better not saying anything because it's in the perception's eye of what is too much in their mind. But it's like, Jesus Christ, like, how are we supposed to get ahead too? Like, what, we can't have fun? Well, we can't have a one-night stand? We, we can't sleep with somebody or have had our experience in bed because, you know, you want this, like, pure woman? Like, this whole virginity concept is, like, make somehow better that because you've had less experience, like, the guy has egos quelled because he doesn't have this, like, long list of guys to shape up against, which I really feel... That's more so what it is, where it's like they want to feel like they're top dog. And if they've heard that you've been around the block and you've had a lot of experience, then they might be compared to somebody that's better than them. And then their confidence goes down, 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 down. So it's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So I think it's safe to say that dating is hard for everybody. And it really shouldn't be determined that one gender has it easier than the other. I think humans in general are complicated. 
Dating is complicated. It's a struggle. It's really hard. You're putting two people together to say, do I want to spend the rest of my life with you? Do you have what it takes to be my best friend? Do you have what it takes to be my sexual partner? And, and do you have what it takes to be my, my challenger in life and somebody that I want to ride into the sunset with and be with forever? That's a, that's a big, tall order. And we're going to have to go through a lot of struggle and a lot of missteps and a lot of people that are just not right for us. And it's, like I said, it's messy, it's complicated, but being a victim is not going to get you anywhere. Being a victim and pointing fingers that men are the problem or women are the problem, and then you're just going to sit back and just blame it on everybody else is going to keep you stuck in the same place. And it will keep you attracting the same people. I don't know how more times I can express this, but Wherever we are in our lives, whatever is subconsciously going on in our minds is what's going to come to our present. So if in the back of our minds, we're like, oh, all guys are assholes and I'm ugly and I'm unlovable and no one's ever going to love me, then you're only going to meet assholes and you'll stay unlovable and no one's going to ever love you. It's as cheesy as it sounds, it's not. It's just the way things work. It's like we bring things to our reality. And it's not like the secret where, you know, you're making a vision board and all of a sudden it comes to life. But there is something to that where, you know, you're really putting some value into what you want to be different. And that's what needs to happen is, okay, I'm looking at what I'm seeing and I don't like what this is. So how do I create a different reality? How do I start looking in different, different places? And I think one of the first things to do is start to observe other healthy relationships. You know, maybe it's in person. Maybe, you know, your friend's parents have had this wonderful marriage. Maybe maybe your friends are in, in a great marriage and no relationship is perfect, so understand that. But start to observe how they treat each other, what they're like to each other, how much they smile around each other and start to make that your focus. Like, oh, it does exist. Good relationships do exist. Good men exist. Good women exist. They're everywhere. But sometimes good women and bad women have had so much struggle and so much trauma that they're so guarded and they can't be seen. And so that's why I'm such a big proponent for doing the work to heal from these traumas and move past the pain that you've already experienced and not to let it define you. The more you let those experiences define you, the more you will become jaded and stay single forever. And if you wanna stay single forever, that's one thing. But I think a lot of people don't want that. And they lie and they say, oh yeah, I'm fine. I don't care, I've given up. Women are terrible, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna live with my dog for the rest of their life. But if a wonderful woman came in your life that treated you well, that was your best friend, wouldn't that be so lovely? And the same for women that have written off men. Wouldn't it be so lovely to have a guy to come home to every day, to talk to about your life, to share your life with, to share your bed with? It's lovely, but it takes a lot of work and it takes struggle and it's complicated. So let's please stop labeling the other gender as the issue. Let's start looking as humans across the board because there's good humans, there's bad humans, there's available humans, there's unavailable humans. And when it doesn't work out, we wipe our hands, we say thank you, let's move on to the next, let's observe our behavior, let's observe our internal dialogue and make sure that that's in alignment for finding somebody of quality and making sure you're not falling into some of these pitfalls for going people after people for the wrong reasons. Like, oh, she's just the hottest girl, but she treats me terrible. Or, oh, he's really wealthy, even though he doesn't treat me well. Or, you know, all of those other things that don't matter. Let's be nicer to each other on dating apps. Let's make some effort. Let's meet each other halfway, okay? Everyone's doing their best, okay? So let's do our best back. <laughs>